Hey, thanks for joining me today on this episode of Mike's Wild World. Uh, today I've got a new stove I want to show you. I've never cooked on it before. It's an alcohol stove. I'm going to show you how I put it together and what I intend to do with it. And uh, also going to make some no-bake biscuits. Uh, we're going to give that a try. So uh, stick around. This ought to be interesting. Uh, come back in a little bit and try to, uh, to get some of this uh, nasty water out of here so I can re restock my supplies. See you later. So, it sort of looks like an onion. It smells like an onion. Let me see if I can shave a little off for you. Certainly looks like an onion. If it was something else, you know, if it's not an onion, it won't have an onion smell. And I think that's the deal here, but I am not familiar with these flat topped onions. They might be popular in your part of the country. Not where I'm at. So it's not garlic because there's no bulbs on the sides of it. There's no cloves in this. Let me see if I can cut the bottom off. Alright. I'm gonna cut it open. Yeah. To me that looks exactly like an onion. It's not it's not strong though. I'm not used to just popping something in my mouth if I didn't know what it is, you know. It's got a sting like an onion. Kind of a fresh, hot, some taste. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh. And I think to be satisfied. I'm going to reference that for my area. You know, I'm you know 95% sure this is a <laughs> that's an odd number, brother. That this is onion. I'm not going to call them wild onion because uh, this appears to be maybe an old home site. Used to drop pelts. Let's throw a, let's throw a few more in there. There it is. Put it in the pouch. There's so many of them around here. I don't. I don't feel bad about digging up just this one. I don't know if you've seen these. I've been looking at this. It's a different type of alcohol stove. Um, has a little handle, top. Looks a lot like all the other ones. The uh, Trangia. Uh, I have a Red Camp. That's what I've been using. But you know, I've been having some issues with this. Can you see me? Yeah, I guess you can. Let me tip my head up. Um, it's, and I, when the pandemic happened and all that stuff, you know, and alcohol became short, I bought several bottles of 91 isopropyl alcohol because that's all I could find. And uh, man, I thought I was fortunate. So I've been burning that. And I've noticed that the, the burn on the stove is just really stupid looking. Uh, it's all orange. It doesn't flame up well. I, I can't even seem to get the proper heat out of it. I need to go back to denatured alcohol. And that's what we're going to put in this today. Uh, I've never used it. Uh, see, it's got a little insert in it, you know, like the, you're supposed to have. That's what you hear rattling. It's a cheapo stove, but it is made out of stainless. It has a little smother top on it like that. It doesn't screw down. Now, that's one of the things I don't like about this is I cannot put fuel in it and screw this tight like I can with the Red Camp. Now what happens with this is I really want to raise it up some. So I'm going to put this tray in the bottom. This is how you're supposed to use the alcohol stove. And this is going to sit upwards. Let's close that. This is going to sit up some off of the ground. Try to make it as level as I can. You know, and then the top goes on this way. So you can see we're getting the flame right up near the top supposedly and then this piece will go in like that for the stove to sit on I mean for the pan to sit on 
Okay, so today, so I can see myself, I'll be using this denatured alcohol. This is about three and a half ounces. I don't believe in bringing these big things. Uh, I have one that has all these increments written on the side, and it's a squirt bottle. But this is something that I've been saving for a while, um, and I think it's just the perfect size for one or two fires in your stove, whatever you need to do. Uh, I think I could use this for any overnighter. That'd be just fine. Because the backup plan, when I use my gasifier stove in conjunction with an alcohol stove, if I run out of alcohol, I'm just going to build a twig fire or stick fire in my gasifier and just keep on going. You know, that's the backup plan for that. And of course, if you know, if you didn't have that, you could actually cook on a campfire. You know, have we forgotten about that? You know, I don't know. But here we go. Let's load her up. Now, I intend to heat up some water and then I'll get around to cooking. So that's about half of the three and a half. So, you know, not quite two. See if that's sitting fairly low. Huh. I think I need more than that. This stove uses or has the capacity to hold more fluid, I think, than the Trangia or the Red Camp. So I'm going to build it up a little bit higher. And anybody still use matches? <laughs> Not so much, you know. We got everybody using ferro rods and extreme lighters and whatever else. I think there's anything better than a good old match. Now these are old, so we'll see what's going to happen. There you go. And that was easy. Okay. It decided that it wasn't easy. Decided to put itself back out. Now let's try one of these old matches. It's kind of like my survival kit. You know, if none of the other stuff works, I go to this. This is definitely waterproof, uh, and it's been it's been dunked a few times. You can see the strike plate is uh, see a little closer. The uh, the striker plate here is uh, pretty much worn out, messed up. I'm not sure what from age, I guess. So let's see if we can get this to go. lit now and with the denatured alcohol you can barely see a flame now okay it's going to bloom in a bit and while that's getting ready to bloom I'm gonna go ahead and get my water ready for a nice cup of coffee Let's put that in there that goes on my grill is going to go on today try to use that for my at least this pot anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to fill up our pot today. We're not going to perk. This is one that I perk in. You've seen that. But I'm going to put some hot, put some hot, put some water to heat up in here. And today, I'm going to make a different kind of coffee. Now what it looks like, uh, sounds like that it's uh, already bloomed. I can't tell because, you know, you can't really see the flame on this denatured alcohol very well. But throwing out some heat. And it's not flaming everywhere it's like some of my other cooking attempts with the uh, isopropyl alcohol. So what's different about the coffee today is I'm going to use one of these filter packs. See if I can get this open. Now that went pretty well. This is a uh, French roast. These little Single packets. Uh, you'll see these in uh, single serve coffee places where they have little single serve coffee makers. You know, any place you have ho hotels and places like that. Well, that sun is bright. Okay, I'm gonna fight through it. Okay, well, it's gonna go behind a tree limb here any minute now. <laughs> Maybe. All right, but when this gets a little warmth to it, all I do is just drop it in the pot. That's getting warm. Here she goes. Boop. Just gonna drop her in and let it cook. Yeah, that might do. Save some for later. Get rid of that. Definitely going to need a little board here. 
and put some of that in. And of course my fingers will be a mess when I get through here. See how uh, low my water supply is getting? Now I'm pretty good with the pancakes and the flapjacks. Uh, the biscuit thing is not something I've done much of. I've eaten my fair share of them. My mother was a champion biscuit maker now <laughs> did she ever win an award no but she had our thing so you know she's she's going now but i remember her making fried chicken with one hand and choking off cat head biscuits with the other and uh her claim to fame was all all through the entire family was you got to go eat mary's biscuits and uh the deal was you know plenty of lard uh salt uh, a 500 degree oven and uh about five or six minutes in a hot skillet and uh, or a hot pan either one and uh, those things just popped up you put some flour on this I'm gonna make a mess here and I'm gonna just dump this out right here like I know what I'm doing well maybe I've done this before and I'm just making one biscuit Okay. Oops, get sticky. Get a little bit more on here. Uh oh, leaf. Now what I want to do is press this out. Now what I want to do is go around it and make the edges the same size you know, as the middle, good thickness all the way through. It's a little, a little powdery maybe, how do you think? Does that look anything like a biscuit? Well, no, it's not going to, you can't really have it high. That's the thing, if you had a high rise biscuit, you know, then it's not going to bake in the middle. I wasted a lot of fuel while making my biscuit and my stove ran out of alcohol when I was halfway through cooking. The camera also stopped right about here. Okay, so I have refueled and I've relit and that is starting to come up. Now, I'm concerned that obviously my biscuit obviously is not done yet. It needs a little more cooking, but that time away is probably going to screw it up. Well, let's just see. Tally who? It doesn't really scoot over very well. There we go. Not too bad. smoke it's not an omelet pan the frying pan okay so you see well I think we're gonna stop right there We'll transfer it over to my eating plate and then we need a topping for our biscuit just going to give it time to rest and, and bloom you've seen me use the the ghee before so i'm going to put a little pat of butter in here just going to put that right off in there and 
and then one of one of these little fellers. You might recognize it. And all it needs is a gentle swishing. Clean my fingers. There you go. Okay, so what we have here is honey and butter. And the honey and butter goes right over the biscuit. Just like that. So what I got now is my biscuit and my honey and butter. Okay. So there you go. There you go. And it's it looks pretty good. It tastes even better. I mean, it's not doughy or anything. And it's not a pancake. It is a biscuit. And that's what it tastes like. I gotta tell you, I'm not disappointed. Now, does it fluff up? No. No, it is, it doesn't. You're gonna have to have 10, 15 minutes. 350 degree oven or more to make this rise like, you know, like the picture says. But I've got really good texture. And it's not fried. You could eat this with baked beans or whatever else you want. I'm sorry I'm talking, but I'm eating. Like I said, I haven't eaten today. You might think it looks like a flapjack, but it's really a biscuit. I'll make pancakes maybe next time, because I like those too. So, I'm going to finish up this honey and butter with my biscuit. Drink my coffee. And then I think we'll go get some of that dirty water. Remember, there was some fuel left over in the stove. It's cooled off a little bit. Got this nice little handle. We'll see if we can pour it back. I think the Red Camp or Trend Trangia, is that the way I said? Trangia? I don't have this though. I have a red camp. Anyway, that type of burner is a little bit easier to deal with because I would just seal this back up with the top and leave it in it. I usually carry my red camp with a full load of alcohol and then another bottle like this and it gets me through several days. As long as I don't waste it, you know. You know what the other with the Trangia and the Red Count, what everybody's selling them now. Uh, you know what they look like. This is just a different take on it. I'll show you though. It has, you know, if you can see it, it has the holes around the outside, around the lower edge. The, the the Red Camp has holes just around the top and where you can seal it. It's because if it had holes on the outside, it, it would leak, obviously. But this one, it's not going to have any fuel in it, and it has a cap that, you know, puts it out. And it's also a good bit cheaper. Uh, I think it was 11, 12 bucks maybe, something like that. What I have is the knock bag that I think highly of. I've had it for several years. It's never failed me, never had holes in it. It's because I don't put it against anything sharp and I don't carry it full of water. Here's my Sawyer. We'll use that in a bit. Okay. I usually do this from a stream or a 
lake, or pond of some sort. Certainly not from a hole in the ground, but it seems to be all I have. This is the two liter bag from Nock, which always gives me more than enough water to filter and clean up with. Now, if that had till morning, you know, to sit, I think it would probably be a lot clearer. That's a pretty full bag. Okay. Top screwed on. <laughs> There's some milky water. I'll bring it up to you. Okay. That little hole filled up pretty good. That's two liters. Now, is it dirty? Well, yeah, but I'm going to run it through my filter. And if it doesn't clog up, it will be a miracle. It may need to be backwashed a little bit. That is some cold water. Oh my gosh. Even though the air temp today is good, the ground is still cold. Remember, it's winter time. We just had several snows and sleets here. That is a typical day in upstate South Carolina in the middle of winter when it looks like spring. Okay, here's some... Here's the water. And it looks pretty good. Now, I just, I had to backwash it again, you know, to blow through it to get it to start running. And I'm having to use the squeeze idea on it to get it to go through. There's so much sediment in this uh, dirt cloudy water uh, that it's really clogging the filter. So it really needs a serious uh, clean water backwash. But for right now, this is the way we're going to do it in the field. You can see that it's just, it's just down to a drip if you can see it from over there. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and try to choke this off and squeeze her down. Most of it's going up instead of down. There we go. I like these knock filter, these back knock bags. Now knock has their own filter system as well, and they have a kit that you can get uh, for dirty water and clean water, and they are different colors, you know, on them with a filter that goes in the middle. Come on, you can do it. One more, a little bit more. There we go. Here. That's up to here. I'll take it. You can see that's about, about half of the bag. Okay, this is what's left of my dirty dishes. I have a honey and butter in the frying pan. I have a little bit of water and flour in my cup and a dirty plate. So I have a plan for that. So you always have some kind of washing up to do. And as you can see, this is almost down to not working at all. Well, the water that I always have left over from a, a refill, I nearly save and then you know, I fill it again the next day. But Knock makes this little accessory it's a little valve that goes on to it lay it right here stand this up got some bubbles out of that <laughs> screw this on now now I have I have not used this yet This is my first application for it, and it's a, a hand wash valve. And by golly, it seems to work. Now, I know this is not clean water, but when's the last time you washed up with clean water? That's a premium when you're out here. I don't mind washing up, because I'm going to wipe this down with my cloth anyway. We're going to be good. Watch this. That's kind of cool. 
gonna take a little more cleaning than I had hoped for. I'll dump it. I really just wanted to show you this valve. And I'm gonna wipe this up probably with my cloth, you know, kind of like in gun smoke when they clean the glasses at the bar. They don't really wash them, they wipe them. So, if you want to add on an accessory to your knock group, uh, that's one. It's not expensive, but it, I'm not going to say it's cheap either. Um, it's, there's not much to it. It's just a plastic valve that is gravity actuated. There's no spring in it, and it has an O-ring at the top. So now that I have enough clean water to make my trek out of here. Are you emptying this out? <laughs> okay, so what I like to do is I put my Sawyer filter inside and just roll it around the bag. Here it is. If you want to know why this is, why I call it Mike's Wild World, that, uh, in the wintertime there's not a lot to see. It's pretty dormant in the woods. Uh, I saw a, a bird or two today. I mean, not a lot of activity. Um, no insects of any kind. I did dig up a worm when I was trying to get the water over there. Uh, but there's a little plant here growing right in front of me up under the, the pine needles here this is a what they call a crane fly orchid I'll give you a close-up of it and it's green on top and this the green leaf is near here now dies back in the summer and has a little little shoot comes up can be really high in some places really low but it kind of looks like flies hovering around those are the little delicate flowers that grow around it the bottom side of this leaf, if you can see it, and I'll give you a good close-up of it, is purple. Uh, I understand it is an edible plant. Uh, I have tasted it. I didn't consume a lot of it, so I don't know what it's going to do to your gastric system if you do that. Uh, it's not toxic, put it that way. And there's tons of these all over the place around here. In some places it's considered endangered, so you might want to know what it is that you're doing. Uh, you know, when you go into an area as to, to whether this is in danger or not, you will be digging them up. Um, but this is one of the things that you can find in the wintertime. Nice green plant that is getting ready to die back and put all this energy into reproduction. And it's an amazing thing to see when, uh, when the seasons change and I get one of these, I'll come back and show you exactly what it looks like. Remember, leave your site like you were never there. I tried to put everything back. I'm not going to fill in the hole. Mother Nature will do that for me. And some animal might enjoy that little drink spot there, you know, so it might do them some good. And here we go. I'll show you the <laughs> that beautiful sunshine. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. It's fading. And, uh, Unless you're prepared, I wouldn't want to be out here because it's going to get, you know, cold tonight. It's still winter. Uh, frosty cold. Which way do I go? Let's go look at that hole one more time. I'm really curious to see if the water cleared up anymore. You know, because if you could dig it today, and then wait till in the morning to check it, You'd have all that time for it to build up. Let's see if I can find it. I know it's in this creek run that is waterless. Ah, there it is. No, it still looks disgusting. 
but by morning it might be a lot better okay well that's for me mike and mike's wild world hope you enjoyed it we'll see you next time I don't know where that one came from don't worry Thank you. Looks like the pine beetles. The south is full of them. And they kill acres, pine trees every year. That is a pine beetle hole right there. And this tree died some time back. I don't know where the top is. Oh, it's that way. <laughs> they crisscross. You see, see the holes? Those are from the pine beetles. And they ate the tree alive. Never been fascinated by woodpeckers. Here's one that went a little bit crazy. Must have been his favorite tree in the whole woods. Jeez. That's a lot of pecking. Remember when a when a tree succumbs to the environment around it, it falls, it opens up the canopy and other things begin to survive and thrive. If this type of uh, environment gives you the woolies and you wouldn't want to be here by yourself, you can go with somebody who knows. Just ask anybody around who's a hunter, fisherman, uh, they have some wherewithal, they've, they've been out there. But um, being out here by yourself, spending the night in this environment, It'll teach you some things about yourself you need to know. So uh, until next time, this is Mike. See ya.